I'm married, Joey. That's why. I'm married. I'm married. What's that supposed to be, Billy? Egg mayonnaise. It's more like mayonnaise egg. Put some more egg in it. <laughs> if you're going to keep your customers busy, you have to play fair. 60p they're paying for a sandwich. Most of them are out of work. My sandwiches are cheaper than anywhere else. <laughs> Only if you put something in them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready for all this. You keep saying that, Billy. What are you ready for? I'm only 17. I should be happy. I'm galloping towards me grave and I'm still waiting for that, Billy. <laughs> Other lads of my age are going to discos, dating girls, larking on the street corners with the Walkmans and the fish and chips. Yes, well, you were ahead of your time. You did all that when you were 10. You've got to pay up now. <laughs> I don't know how I managed to get pregnant so soon. You didn't get pregnant, Billy. Julie, then? And if you don't know, there's a book in the living room on the third shelf. <laughs> I've read that. If I know you, you've only read the first half. It doesn't deal with pregnancy until page 56. You would have fallen asleep by then. It's not that I don't love them, Julie and the baby. It's just... It's just what, love? It's just... Well, I haven't time to wait for the other half of the sentence, Billy. <laughs> have a line. It's quarter to eight, love. You asked me to call you. Ah, oh, Joey's late coming home. I wonder where he's got to. It's just... things. <laughs> I'm married, Joey. That's why. Don't forget your anemia pills, Aveline. I've taken them, ma'am. Good girl. When you're out, can you get some more deluxe muesli, ma'am? They must think I'm keeping very lucky rabbits down at the supermarket. <laughs> People do that, you know. People do that. You keep little rabbits to make fur coats. We know, we know. It's disgusting. Even when I'm a famous model, I'm not going to wear animals. I've seen the adverts in the papers. Breed rabbits for meat, it says. Small space needed, guaranteed turnover. Can you pass me the marmalade, please, Jack? I fancy wearing little rabbits. I fancy making money out of killing little rabbits. We all agree, Billy. You can seal your gob now. And what they do is... <laughs> <clears throat> what they do is, when they're fat enough, they grab hold of their ears like that, and they haul it up out of the hutch, and then they... If you slaughter that rabbit all over my toast and marmalade... <laughs> Billy! I know you like reminding us of all the unsavoury things that are going on out there in the world, but couldn't you unleash it all when we're not eaten? You're all afraid. That's oh. what it is. You can't cope with the gruesome side of life. I've seen everything. I've seen Julian Labour. I've seen not a video of a birth. I've seen a real birth. I've seen Julie giving birth to a real baby. Yeah. And we've all seen you seeing Julie giving birth to a real baby. <laughs> Your face was as green as the hospital gown. And every time anyone looked at you, you wept and said, I'm not, not ready for all this. this. <laughs> And squash me, squash me spirit. I think I'll give Aunt Joey a ring. Goodbye, this cold yizzle. Goodbye. Yeah. It was this sudden urge to save God's little creatures. A bit late to save this lot. What's in my head that counts? In your head, you suddenly love little animals. Yeah, yeah. And you suddenly decided not to eat them or wear them anymore. Well, yeah. And you needed the money. Yeah. For your granny. I haven't got a granny. Be friendly, Yizzle. Be loving. Friendly and loving? Yeah.
Didn't expect to see you in a proddy church, did we, Yizzle? Nah. Unexpected. I like to listen to both sides, gentlemen. We've been having a chat, haven't we, Yizzle? A chat, yeah. We've, uh, acquired some stuff. Nicked it, you mean? You hear that, Yizzle? Nicked it, he says. Said with some venom, Guff. Said with venom, Yizzle. Anyway, we bought these four bronze horses. A new bar wench clutching a dove, said someone. Her lover is pursuing her. But he's somewhat impeded by the lead horse. It's got his foot on his head. <laughs> anyway, while we were purchasing this object of art and pathos, the old lady's son arrived home to stay with his man. Nice boy, eh, Yizzle? Yeah, loving son. So while he was parking his car, we made a hasty retreat. On our toes, yeah. And now we need someone respectable to collect the said item. Well, Yizzle and me weren't born with that innocent look. We came into this world roughed up a bit, didn't we, Yizzle? Yeah, sort of pre-packed. It shows. <laughs> it shows. Whereas you gently slid into this world with a loving mum and dad gazing at the miracle, crossing themselves into an ecstatic heap. So, you've bought something valuable from an old lady and paid a penny for it, and you'd like me to collect it for you. On your rocket. I was talking to a friend of yours yesterday. What was her name again, Yezel? Roxy. Roxy Hardswell. Oh, yeah, Roxy. Very nice girl, very pretty. Got a nice husband. Big. Yeah, very big. Temperamental. Doesn't like good-looking young men taking his wife out to dinner. Kissing her by a tree. Especially kissing them by a tree. Against her will. Oh, yes, definitely against her will. I'm off. Oh, that's your favourite threat, isn't it? I'm off. The moment someone confronts you with reality, you're off. Like a, a rocket from a milk bottle. Luke, I don't want to be tied. I don't want to be owned. You think you're Casanova, don't you? With your face all red and your hair all standing to attention. <laughs> Tell you, Freddie Boswell, when I first saw you, I thought you were wearing someone else's trousers. <laughs> That's how you always look as if you're wearing someone else's trousers. You're going back to her, aren't you? I'm making demands like try and come home one night, so it's time to be off, isn't it? And when she, poor cow, does the same, you'll be off again, won't you? The only relationship you want is with that bloody cunt! <laughs> so Just checking Grandad's money, Mum. It's fine. Put it all back the way you found it, Jack. You know Grandad. He'd notice if you had an eyelash missing. 253, 54, 55. 255 pounds 60, Mum. He's taken some out. There was 300 and something there last time. Yeah, well, he spent that 40 quid on a basket for Mongi, didn't he? After his operation. That was a waste of money. It was too small. Mongi couldn't even get his bum into it. <laughs> anyway, what's he saving up for? He should spend it all and enjoy himself. Oh, people like to save, Jack. They save everything. I've seen your granddad sitting there with an electric meter full of money and him going down with frostbite. <laughs> Put it all back carefully. I'll take him his tray. And put the box back when he's not looking. He'll have plenty of time. He always takes his Danish pastry to bits to make sure they haven't done him out of the apple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ma'am. Oh, beautiful! 
Adrian? So beautiful! Adrian! Yes, Mum? Is it happiness, Adrian, or have you cut yourself? Oh, happiness, Mum! Freedom and happiness! He's left Carmen. Oh, the poor love. All she wanted him for was sex. She used to ring him up at two o'clock in the morning. He'd fall asleep talking about it. <laughs> and I'd lie awake thinking about it. <laughs> if Joy comes in, there's a meal on a plate in the microwave. All right. It's funny he hasn't rung. He'll be all right, ma'am. Don't worry. I'll be back soon. Poor I am beautiful. So beautiful <laughs> to be home. It's my new image. <laughs> you look like a hanging basket. <laughs> I'm going out there now, kid, and I'm going to stampede the world, ride the waves, scale the rocks. I am going to do the things that the man whose girlfriend loved milk tray never did. Cos I am beautiful, beautiful to behold. The thing about human beings, Mongi, is, although we're cleverer than you, with after Danya. these clothes with women in mind, not bulldozers. Having a little tantrum, are we? Look, she's happy with the 50 quid. She's probably spent it already on lavender and surgical stockings. Look, we spent a lot of time on agro acquiring the said object. We had to plow our way through several pots of stewed tea, didn't we, Yizzle? Yeah, we did. And two Dundee cakes. <laughs> Dundee cakes. Yizzle. Make that call to Mr. Hartwell, will you? Tell him we know someone who knows his wife, and they both know something that he ought to know. We know someone who knows someone who knows something that we know. Just tell him to get here, pronto. <laughs> Keys. We don't maim or kill our opponents. We just inconvenience them. Forgive me, Father, for my sins, and I ask you to help unravel my mind. It's about... Well, it's about everybody, really. Everybody I love. There's Freddie Boswell, the man I married, Father. Do you remember the wedding? Underneath his smart suit, he had string holding up his trousers. <laughs> and that's how he is. Half of one thing and half of another. He's unpredictable, Father. And I can see by the expression on his face that something's brewing. What is it, Father? Show me. And there's Adrian. He worries me too, Father. 
Deep down, he's a shy, self-conscious boy. But just lately, he's shed his real skin, and he's become like an aggressive puff. <laughs> you should see the way he dresses, Father. He looks like an offshoot of Billy Smart Circus. <laughs> Bring back the gentle Adrian father. And the Tsar Aveline. I can tell things are not going right for her father. I don't think modelling is making her happy. They said at the hospital that she was anemic. It's all that dieting father. And her eyes are all puffed up. I think she cries a lot. Guide her father. And our Billy. He's young, Father, with all the responsibilities of a man. Could you give him a man's strength, Father, without losing the boy? <laughs> I don't know what to say about our Jack. You can never tell with him. And he's never been the same since our Adrian told him about that tart that lives up at the big house. She tried to seduce Adrian, father, when he went for a gardening job. And when our Jack took his shoes off last night, they were full of grass cuttings. <laughs> is he just revving up for a new experience? What is he going to take after his dad? Save us all from that, please, father. <laughs> Grandad is fine, father. All he needs is food. Perhaps you could bless his stomach and his gob. <laughs> that leaves Joey. So private he is, Father. So full of secrets. Smiling and protecting. But just lately he's looked sad. Feeling cold, are we? Feeling worried? There you are. Show you what a kind person I am. I apologise for this, but the, uh, the trouble is you're stubborn and I'm vindictive. So, just a little roughing up before we shake hands and go our separate ways, eh? OK? Not the one in the fur coat. <laughs> Sometimes, Jezel, I'm not very pleased with you. Just a little roughing up before we shake hands and go our separate ways. Yeah. Whatever's happening to him. Bring him home, Father. Smiling. Brought your dinner, Grandad. It looks lovely. She makes too many sauces. Yesterday I had shepherd's pie, and when I put the brown gravy stuff on, it turned out to be me pudding. <laughs> it was chocolate sauce, Grandad, what? to go over the ice cream. Oh. Do you mind if I sit down, Grandad? Or were you going to watch the news? No, I switched it off before the newscaster killed himself. <laughs> it's a desperate place out there, Grandad. Because it's full of people, that's why. There'd be no trouble if it was filled with animals. I wanted to talk to you, Grandad. Well, go on then. It's about me modelling. Aye, go on then. I don't think it's right for me. It's not right for anybody. It's a daft thing, modelling. It's been me dream, Grandad, ever 
ever since I was a little girl, dressing up in me mum's clothes. Phony women, walking up and down as if they've got Z-shaped legs and a barbed wire vest. <laughs> Today, I realised I can't do it, Grandad. I haven't got style. I'm common, you see. You're what? Well, I'm not posh, am I? Boring people, the posh. Your Auntie Gertie's posh. Well, no, Grandad. She goes to Paris to buy air frocks. She goes to London to have her teeth done. And she has her initials embroidered on all her sheets. Mm -hmm. Oh, she has everything. She's on antidepressants. She never told me. Sneaky people, the posh. All the same, Grandad. If I talk different, The I... way you talk's got nothing to do with it. You'd still come down that catwalk like a deformed duck. <laughs> Got the feet for it. You'd be better doing demolition work. <laughs> oh, at least you made me laugh, Grandad. At least you made me laugh. <laughs> what? Is me pudding coming? <laughs> yes, she's here. All right. And I don't want any lemon pie. Why? Because the government have banned some chemical because it's poisonous. But they haven't banned making it. So now we're selling it to the Mexicans. <laughs> they spray their lemons with it, and then they sell them back here for us to eat. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Your dinner's ready. Never you mind, my lovely. Just you wait and see. That's all we can do. Posh and common. <laughs> oh, give over. You'll make me hair grow. <laughs> Fill the water jug, Billy. Not the tap. We don't use tap water, not since the Russian disaster. I have to when I'm over at Julie's. Yes, well, if they put a Geiger counter to your stomach, it would sound like a concerto for castanets. <laughs> Are you all right, Joey? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You didn't. You didn't knock at her door. I did. I believe you want some gardening done, I said. Did she flirt with you? Flirt? When I walk past her in the hall, she burns a hole in my jacket. <laughs> She terrified me. Yeah. Well, she's probably got a lot of notches on her headboard. She pinned me against the greenhouse. I know now how St. George felt and the dragon breathed on him. <laughs> well, in my case, the situation was reversed. How do you mean? Reversed? Well, you know. Reversed. You mean you approached her? Yeah. You actually kissed her? Yeah. On the mouth? Well... I started by kissing her hand. I couldn't reach her mouth. She's a very tall lady. <laughs> but I stood on a seed box and it was all plain sailing after that. You've got nerve, Jack. God, you've got nerve. Yeah, well, I'm experienced, aren't I? I know all the tricks. So, uh, what happened? Well, she responded. You mean she grew three extra arms and clamped you to the nearest post? No, no, I told you. I was in control. I was the one who did the clamping. You didn't? Did you? Didn't what? You didn't. Go all the way. Yeah? <laughs> You're a tart. <laughs> all the way down the path, through the herb garden, over the wall, and up the jewel carriageway like a badger with its arse on fire. <laughs> Jack, hey, kid, come on, your dinner's ready. Hello, yep. Yeah. No, he's not here, I'm afraid. Just a minute, please. It's a Mr Woodstock he wants to talk to you. I've never heard of him. Get his number, Jack. I'll ring him back. Hello? Can she call you back? Only she's in the middle of something. Hello, love. Sit down. Yeah. OK. Thanks. Bye. The number's there, man. Right. Another day ended. <laughs> I was worried about you this morning, Joey. Eleven o'clock and no call. Oh, I was busy, ma'am. If I stayed out and didn't make a phone call, I'd be in dead trouble. That's because if you stayed out all night and didn't make a phone call, it would be because you were in dead trouble. <laughs> <clears throat> I've made a big decision today. I'm not modelling anymore. Oh, good. 
Does that mean we won't have to listen to her saying, I'm going Billy. to... Billy! I know I could have been a big star, but I've decided that it's an unnatural life. Bony women all walking down the catwalk like deformed ducks. Are you sure? Nobody's upset you, have they? Because if they Nobody's have... Nobody's upset me. Well, it's your life, Princess. I'm glad you're giving it up. You'd be like a normal girl now. You won't spend hours in the bathroom defoliating yourself. <laughs> I'm not giving up looking after me body. Will we still get the baby oil in the bath? Yes, you will. So don't make any plans to leave go of the handrail. I never get an actual bath. I just step in one end and shoot out the other. <laughs> anyway, I'm giving it up. And I'm giving up all this. I must say, it didn't suit you, Adrian. And it didn't go with a briefcase. <laughs> yeah, I had to go through it, of course. I had to. What about Carmen, though? I love Carmen, but I was like a little woolly ball beneath her feet. <laughs> Each time she trod on me, I'd puff up again. <laughs> and then one day, one day, I just rolled away. You sound a bit mixed up to me. It's funny how we're always running away from women. It's a bit like being one of those poor male spiders in the jungle. You want to, but you don't know whether or not she'll eat you afterwards. <laughs> You'll all meet somebody special one day. There's many a laugh and many a tear to be shared round this table. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've just come through the laughs. <laughs> I've just come through the tears. Now, what does he mean? Prayers. <clears throat> For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. And a special thank you from me, oh Father. Amen. 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 Julie and I took the baby to the park today. I had a smashing time on the swings. <laughs> Do you think you could get him to give me a ring as soon as he comes in? 